Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. Uh, in this video, I am sharing my learnings from the middle discourse 13, which is the longer discourse on the mass of suffering. Now, <coughs> uh, the link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can go through the entire discourse and get your own uh, insights and learnings. Now, uh, middle discourse 13, basically the context here is that uh, the monks who are in the Buddha's teaching, they thought to interact with uh, the ascetics, the monks of other religions, right? And uh, uh, so basically they told about that, you know, we follow this path. And the other ascetics said that, uh, so the ascetic, so uh, the ascetics of Gautama, the Siddhartha, uh, Buddha said that we uh, advocate, uh, Buddha advocates complete ending of suffering, complete, en complete understanding of sensual pleasures and uh, complete ending of suffering. So the other ascetics said that this is the same thing that we also do. Like what is the difference in that? So Buddha is in this discourse basically guiding the monks that when you are faced with this question of other ascetics, see what happens is that you know there are like debates that you know which, which path is better. So basically Buddha is here just guiding and supporting the monks uh, uh, in the Buddha's tradition that what should you do in, those, in this particular trade, uh, uh, situation. So Buddha explained that primary reason that Buddha, Buddha said that that our uh, uh, the teaching that Buddha has given is far superior than that of the other teachings. Now Buddha says that the primary reason for this is that the wanderers, the ascetics of the other religions or other paths don't fully understand what the three things, gratification, drawback and escape from three things, sensual pleasures, forms and feelings. Right? Please understand here, it is not like that Buddha is saying that only my teaching is you know, right and all other teachings are wrong. No. Buddha is actually telling the fact that you know, the ascetics who say that uh, you know, they understand what is feelings and forms and you know, uh, ending of suffering, they do not know the basics of what is gratification, what is drawback and what is escape. So what Buddha is teaching and this is why Buddha's teaching is very different from other teachings is that Buddha has com completely mastered the mind. So it is like called that he was like a mind scientist on how these feelings emerge and how these feelings, what are the drawbacks and how to escape these, fe these feelings and forms and everything. So his teachings were unparalleled as compared to the teachings of the contemporaries in th at that time. Right. So... <clears throat> So Buddha said that uh, uh, that that wanderers of those uh, other paths they do not fully understand these things. Now, coming to first sensual pleasures. Now, sensual pleasures basically what are the what is the gratification? So Buddha said stimulation by the five senses. Whatever stimulation that the five senses sights, sound, smell, touch these things provide us that is the gratification. So we are if we want that gratification. That's why we see certain things, we hear certain things, we eat certain things for the taste, right? So that instant gratification that we get. Now the drawback to this is the that Buddha showed that because of this search for sensual pleasures, what people do, people do various kinds of jobs and some people do legal, moral jobs, some people do even immoral jobs. And because of that, what they do is they face cold and heat, being hurt and risks death from hunger and thirst. Some people engage in occupations where they can also even die, right? Then if they fail to earn money, they sorrow, wail and lament that I have not earned whatever effort is gone waste. Then if they, they experience pain and sadness when we try to protect the money, right? There are a lot of people who earn a lot, but then they invest in wrong places and then they lose their money. So that they, their, their pain and insecurity of protecting the money keeping it intact, then fighting with their own people, their own kin for the money. So you see a lot of property disputes, property battles and everything that keep on happening, right? So then they break into houses, plunder wealth, steal from isolated buildings, commit adultery, all these things for the sake of sensual pleasures. Then they conduct themselves badly by way of body, speech and mind, right? So these are all the drawbacks of the sensual pleasures, right? Then Buddha said, what is the escape? The Buddha said the escape is removing and giving up the desire and greed for the sensual pleasures. So important thing is that you know, Buddha never advocated that you leave everything and go to a like a forest or something, become a monk. No, his teachings were both for the monks and for the lay people like you and me. But what basically Buddha is saying is important thing is removing that desire and greed. 
come back to the noble uh, come back to the four noble truths what does the noble uh, noble truth number 2 say reason of suffering reason of suffering is craving all craving just keep looking into your life any kind of craving or attachment or desire that you have will create your sorrow will keep you bound in this samsara so what basically we have to do even for lay people like us right so my videos are like for lay people like us who cannot go in the forest who just want some easy way how do we can understand and interpret buddha's teachings look into all these um uh, look into all these de desires and cravings and aversions that we have in our daily life just keep looking at them just keep looking do not think that they should go they have been built up through through several past lifetimes unconsciously those patterns are inside just keep if just keep looking at them just do do not identify with them just keep looking right then so that is a escape removing and giving up the desire and the greed for the sensual pleasures right you don't have to do anything so some big yagya or some big puja or some big worship or nothing just look into your mind and remove that desire just even before removing i will just say look be mindful of the desire and the greed and the aversion that is coming up right the more mindful you become the more the the the, the hold of those patterns start reducing right so that is on the sensual pleasures then uh, uh, the gratification the gratification drawback and escape of form so this is where basically buddha is sharing the example of a girl like a girl who is like a you know a teenager you know who is like maybe 18 or something and she has a very nice body and everything so buddha is saying that looking at her you know generates happiness lust in you right and then that the buddha is progressively progressively explaining that you know how that lady um, grows old and grows sick and you know and then she is at her deathbed and then she dies and then you know all her bones and everything and corpses which are discarded in a charnel ground and devoured by crows hawks right so becomes a skeleton with flesh and blood then you know then corpses then uh, it reduced to white bones color of shells decrepit bones what do you think mendicants has not that former beauty vanished and the drawback becomes clear right so basically what buddha is saying is that this is how this is how you know beauty the same sister the who uh, you you got gratification from that sister uh, looking at her her you know her figure and her body and then uh, so that was a gratification then the then the the drawback was that the same sister suffering gravely ill collapsed in her own urine and faces being picked picked up by some and put down by others it's like her, in her old age so so buddha was taking explaining that thing and then what is the escape removing and giving up desire and greed for forms this is the escape from forms right so removing and giving up the desire all these desires that we have for a body and uh, you know and that desire we have to give up right and only then we can give up the so it's buddha's teaching is all about looking into our mind this is where the problem is so buddha said that i can tell buddha had this power that looking at someone's mind he could see that whatever is stored whatever garbage is stored depending upon that the person gets born so he was very clear that this person is going in this way this is his kind of a whatever structure that is there in his mind all is his mind this whole body will go will remain here someone will burn my body or someone will bury my body but my mind will continue the force the karmic force that i have generated through all these lives and through this current life what i have thought spoken everything nothing goes anywhere this whole energy this whole karmic force will lead me to a new birth and where which out of the 31 realms where i get born depending upon my karmas right so our task here in this life is to be purify ourselves more and more purify ourselves this is the only work that we need to do right okay so this is basically the forms then feelings so feelings basically uh, uh, feeling is basically what the intention here in this in this uh, sutta is not the actual feelings of good uh, positive feelings anger and all these things it's basically the the feelings of bliss that we get in meditation 
So the gratification what happens is when the mendicant is in a deep state of meditation, he gets the rapture and the bliss. But the drawback of this is that he understands that the feelings are impermanent, suffering and perishable. And this is what Buddha got the when he was when, when Buddha was not enlightened and he was like six years he was training under various masters. So he was getting trained under the master Alara Kalama and uh, he told him about the various stages in meditation and he got very very quickly he progressed and uh, realized very deep stages but then he realized that it did not end the suffering right it did not you know serve the ultimate purpose for which he is looking in he he, le he went left his family and everything so the drawback of this blissful state of meditation and all that we attain is that the feelings are imperishable right is is basically impermanent suffering right so that is the drawback and escape is removing and giving up desire and greed for feelings that means let go of any desire so it's like said no that if you're meditating just don't aspire to be attain any particular state that is what vipassana is all about no inside meditation that you just be there and just keep witnessing whatever is arising some days it will be very blissful some days it will not be blissful right so this greed or desire that i have for a state in my meditation that also blocks obstructs my progress right so that we have to also let go of that so the overall so this is basically all the three things that i have covered uh, that have been covered in the sutta sensual pleasures then um, basically forms and then feelings now the lesson though was just the ultimate the 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 takeaway that as a lay people what we can get from this is that understand and tr the true nature of the body feeling and the sensual pleasures right this is what the real work what buddha wants us to do is that you know see all these things how we keep ourselves stuck you know by these desires and cravings so for this we need to actually witness all these things deeply and that is what the vipassana meditation is that we see and sort most subtle and the most subtle things that emerge right so we witness that we follow the noble eightfold path we follow the five precepts and we see the impermanent non self and suffering what are the three marks of existence impermanence everything is impermanent everything is changing second non self there is no permanent self right only the causes and conditions are arising and passing away and third is unsatisfactoriness suffering behind beneath everything that you see in this creation there is suffering so we just become more and more aware of the three marks of existence and that is what we have to do so this is just my little understanding from this sutta do please uh, i'm just sharing these videos so that maybe some fun in uh, who is watching this may get motivated to study the suttas in detail and follow the buddha's path in detail uh, 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 more rigorously do do uh, uh, do read the sutta and do share your reflections thoughts comments in the comment section thank you so for, so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya